speaking of pricing, this is something that comes up a lot with farmers that we work with, that it's difficult <laughs> to find the right pricing. Do you have any tips or any things, you know, I guess you mentioned looking at the reports, but any other tips that you have for other farmers who are a bit lost on how they should price their products? So we, because we're kind of a specialty, you know, the grass-fed, grass-finished plus fodder and regen egg, um, we used to kind of just go like as a starting point, we would, you know, follow Joel Salatin or someone who's in Regen Egg, who's, you know, got books out and stuff. So we would go and be like, what are their prices? And um, they're in the United States, obviously. So we would convert it to Canadian and mm-hmm. like, hey, we should be kind of around that area. But the biggest thing is like, don't compare yourself to grocery store prices. That is the worst thing you can do. And I know a lot of farmers in this area do that. They'll go to a big store and say, oh, well, they're selling ground beef for this. So I'll tack on 25 cents per pound more. And then it's, you know, because I'm special and I'm a small farm and I'm doing it naturally. Don't do that because you won't make any money and you have to be sustainable. If you want your farm to keep on going, you have to make money, right? You can't just keep putting your full-time job income into your farm. It's not necessarily a hobby anymore. You know, there used to be these hobby farms, but like, for example, Phil and I are trying to make this our lifestyle and our business. So you have to do what's sustainable for you. And again, that's why I look at the end of the year, I'll do each enterprise differently. So for the pork, I look at what we spent on the feed, vet bills, not necessarily like fencing and stuff, because that's like a one-time, hopefully one-time purchase, right? And then it's done. But like the things we need to keep the animals alive, I'll do a breakdown and see, okay, how much did we actually profit on this enterprise? And then a lot of times we'll have to be like, okay, we should probably either increase our bulk sale per pound amount, or there's certain retail cuts where we can increase. Like for example, last year, we were selling our beef tenderloins for like $16 a pound. And then we realized like, oh wait, no, those should probably be closer to 30 a pound. Cause they're like filet mignon. Like that's the good. Yeah. Cut. And we, we were like, why are they selling so fast? Like what's going on? And I'm like, we, we didn't make this much money on beef this year. Like what? And so, you know, you make the adjustments and you're like, okay, yeah. Filet mignon needs to go up. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Yeah. And so that's kind of how I gauge our prices is like, you can do some comparing not to grocery stores because they, you know, they're always lower. And um, Phil has this saying, he, he, you know, people will say, oh my gosh, your, your meat's a little expensive. And he's like, yeah, we sell Cadillacs, not Kias. You know, this is good quality stuff. You have to sell the value of your product, not the price of your product. So okay. if you can promote how good it is, how much healthier it is, how it's anti-carcinogenic as opposed to the red dye number 10 that's in the grocery store meats, you know, then people will catch on. Like the right people will come. Of and course. You, you can't please everybody. There will always be someone who doesn't like your prices and that's fine. It's just, it's not for them. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you or what you did. So no, that's no. my tip for farmers is like, don't feel the guilt. I know we all feel guilty. Like we have to feed the world, but like, you're going to go under if you can't pay for your expenses. 